It's no secret that the current robotic simulator landscape is a bit messy. If you're just getting started and you're using ROS, you'll probably come across Gazebo, which used to be Ignition, which used to be Gazebo, but was something completely different back then. And I've shown Isaac ROS on this channel before. There's also WeBots or more generic 3D engines like Unity or O3DE that have robotic support. Kimberly Maguire maintains a great list of over 150 different simulators, and of course, each one has its own focus and features and issues and bugs. But I managed to find one that's not currently on the list, and while that's probably for good reason, I still think it's pretty neat and maybe even useful. This simulator is so good that they actually made a movie about it. That's right, one of the highest grossing films of the year was about a robot simulation software. Minecraft. I expect many of you will have actually played Minecraft before, and if not, you're probably still aware of the general concept. You run around an automatically generated world of cubes or voxels, and depending on the mode, you're focused on either surviving by building shelter, finding food and defending yourself, or just building cool structures, kind of like digital Lego. It is wildly popular, especially with younger people, and so it's no surprise that people have found ways to turn it into an educational tool. In fact, there's an official Minecraft education webpage with resources for parents and teachers, each of which comes with a Minecraft world where kids can build logic circuits inside the game or learn other STEM concepts. But we're here to talk about robotics, and back in May, Japanese student Kazusa Hashimoto shared a project that they had been working on to the ROS Discourse Forum, a Minecraft mod that integrates it with ROS2. The first question you'll want to ask is how to run it, and it's not too hard. If you don't know, there are different versions of Minecraft that have been released, and the original one was written in Java. Now, that version is easier to create mods for, but Java can be a bit of a pain with ROS, so Kazu has helpfully bundled it all up into a Docker container. To get started, all we have to do is clone the repo onto our computer, and then we'll run the xhost plus local root to allow GUI access for Docker. You can check out my video on Docker for more information about this. And then from inside the Minecraft ROS2 folder, we're gonna run docker compose up. The first run is gonna take a while as it first downloads the various layers of the Docker image and then compiles everything inside the Docker file. Another reason having Docker is helpful is that this code has been written for Humble, but my host is running Jazzy, and so that way I can run it without having to find something that has Humble. As a bit of a sidebar, I bought Minecraft around October 2010, thinking that I was late to the game and people would stop playing it soon, and while that was the case for most of my friends, in hindsight that really was the early days. Now, I lost that account in the Microsoft migration, and so I purchased it again when I saw this mod, not realizing that it will actually run a development version that happily starts without any login. So you don't actually need to buy it, but you probably should. Now, I've actually got an error here. It says, error response from daemon, could not select device driver with capabilities GPU. That's because I have not yet installed the NVIDIA container toolkit on this computer. So I'm gonna do that now. All right, that's better. So if we have a look, it is now uh, downloading the Java stuff in the background that it needs to compile the mods and everything inside the Docker container. Eventually, we should see the Minecraft window as well as an RViz window, and that's because the Docker Compose script actually runs two different containers based on the same image, one for Minecraft and one for RViz. This will be important later when we're messing around with things. I'm just gonna quickly start a game in creative mode. A couple of tips here if you're gonna do this yourself. Whenever you alt tab, Minecraft will pause, which is often not what we want. To fix this, if we hold F3 and press P, we'll see pause on lost focus disabled. And now when we alt tab, we can see it's still running the same in the background. However, you may want to pause it with escape when you resize the window. Otherwise, if you try to resize it while it's alt-tabbed in the background, 
Sometimes what'll happen is you can see there, it's now like made the screen tiny. Sometimes it'll disappear. If you do that and you get stuck, you can use uh, your operating system window tiling key. So for me, if I go super or windows key and then press right, it'll put it on the right hand side and then I can pause and kind of fix things properly. <laughs> All right, let's see what this thing can do. Now, the first thing obviously we see is that the current camera view is published to an image topic. So right off the bat, we could implement some image processing, maybe to detect a particular object or something. What I think is really fun though, are the LIDARs. So if we press E to go to our inventory and we can see we've got access to everything here. And if we go down into the combat section and scroll to the bottom, we can see there's all these different LiDAR models here and we get a bit of a hint of how to use them. It says when on head, you know, it gives some extra armor or whatever. So what I'm going to do is put all of these into my inventory and then I'm going to equip one of them as the helmet for the player. So you can see now the player is showing the LiDAR on their head and as I move, I was a bit worried this might be the case. This computer is less powerful than the one I tested this on. Um, so I've just swapped to one of the single layer LiDARs to, to demonstrate. So you can see there, as I move around, we can see the LiDAR data coming through. I can scroll through the different items in my inventory and right click to swap to them. And you can see those ones. However, these uh, yeah LiDARs with more data are kind of bogging down this computer a bit too much and it gets stuck. So. We'll swap back to the single layer one. Each of these different LiDAR models has different resolutions and field of view. So you can play around and find one that you like. Now the laser's your angle is controlled by the player's direction, but pitch and roll are kept locked, which makes things easier and it keeps the ground flat rather than everything jumping around everywhere. But sensing is only one half of the robotics problem. The other half is actuation. So for this simulator to really work, we need to be able to steer the player around. To do that, the plugin subscribes to the standard command velocity topic. So we need a way to send those messages. Now, if I was on Humble, I'd just expose the container to our host network, but on Jazzy, that mismatch will cause a memory leak and the computer will crash. So we won't do that. We could spin up a new container attached to the same Docker network or add it to the compose file but I'm gonna take a lazy approach and just attach a new terminal to one of the containers. So I can run docker exec dash it minecraft ros2 and we'll see we have the minecraft one or the rviz one, I'll attach to the rviz one and we wanna execute slash bin slash bash. And now this terminal is running inside that container. So if I first run source opt uh, Ross humble setup dot bash. Then I want to run teleop twist keyboard, but it's not installed and I'm just going to have to update apt and then install it. All right, now we can Ross to run teleop twist keyboard. And then if we go back to Minecraft and unpause it, and alt tab into our terminal, we should see that when we move with teleop twist keyboard, that's gonna send the command velocity message telling the player to move around. At this point, I was getting pretty excited. We've got camera, we've got LiDAR, we've got motion. We can build whatever rectangular world we want. This is great. Unfortunately, this is where I started to run into some problems. I tried to run some SLAM packages, both for the 3D LiDAR as well as trying to extract a 2D scan and use that, but with no luck. I think it might be timing issues, either a synchronization thing or just the latency in the game. I do notice a fair bit of stuttering, so it's probably struggling to overcome that. After not touching it for a few months, I went to take another look and saw that there's now a tutorial that runs SLAM, and I thought, that's great, they fixed it but I'm still struggling to get anything consistent. I'll show you what I've got and hopefully someone can figure out what I'm doing wrong or patch whatever is causing these issues. Because if you can, I think that this could be a great way to teach Ross and introduce algorithms in a 
friendly and familiar environment. So what can we do? Well, anything low frequency that doesn't rely on the timing should be okay. For example, you could give a student this world and ask them to write a script that uses OpenCV to detect the red area and move the player towards it. Here's Claude's first attempt. Although without a dead man switch mode, if we kill our script, the player keeps moving, so it helps to keep a terminal open to be able to send the stop signal. Maybe a next step could be to build a world with April tags and have the robot search for a certain one or use the depth information from the LiDAR to avoid obstacles. I was about to say that one of the limiting factors for working with SLAM algorithms is that the plugin currently doesn't publish any odometry, although there does seem to be something here on a more recent version, um, but it's not quite working at the moment. Ideally, it could be configured to be perfect so that students can focus on building mapping and navigation solutions and having the localization solved for them, or noisy to instead looking at solving localization problems and sensor fusion. There is also an IMU topic, but I think extracting odometry from that would be pretty noisy, although I haven't actually tried. For me, trying to run the provided SLAM example kind of works with one of the lasers, but it still falls over pretty quickly and it doesn't seem to work at all with the other ones. I assume the screenshot on their repo is something they have achieved though, so you might have better luck. A few other cool things that supposedly work, there's meant to be a service you can call to send console commands, like the kind you would use to change the time or the weather, but that just doesn't seem to exist. If you edit a config file, you can enable a topic with the player status, like the health and what they're holding and all sorts of useful game information. Tying this in with the console commands, you could probably control a significant amount of the behavior all from ROS, which is really cool. You could pretty much build a Minecraft bot, but with ROS. Their screenshot shows this data in Arviz, which I couldn't manage, but the data is definitely there on a topic. Lastly, it supports the new simulation interfaces spec on the Spawn Entity Service. They have a demo for this that I couldn't get to work even after fixing some incorrect paths. I'd be surprised if this actually spawns a URDF into the world, but who knows what they've managed to set up. I guess it converts it into this JSON format, but I'm not sure what it would be able to do once it's actually in the Minecraft world. If you have any interest in this project, whether you're an educator or just for personal use, I recommend you check out the link down in the description and try it out for yourself. And if you think you could make use of some of those unfinished features, why not have a go at implementing them yourself? I think Kazoo has done a great job with this project. And if you know of any other cool robotics projects like this that I could share with everyone, please let us know down in the comments. This will probably be the last video before Roscon at the end of the month. So if you're going, I'll see you there. Otherwise, I'll catch you next time.